Here's some topics we're going to talk about. Um, the USDA, through the years, now th this is some different things that they've done through the years. They came up with a rule of no showback. Now they did this, no showback, and we all know this because they would turn a horse down. Yes. 15, 20 minutes later, that horse come up to go into a different class. Mm -hmm. And they'd pass him. Yes. So they said, well, we're, we're just not going to have no show back. And then they, uh, later on, when we complained about that, what did they do next? Granted a second opinion. Mm hmm And what was funny is when they couldn't agree on the second opinion, they'd get in a heated discussion like that right there. Yes. So they said, well, we ain't going to do that no more either. So what I'm pointing out is what we have gone through for years. That was the second opinion. Well, let's talk about that no show back rule. Yeah. Okay, so what's going on right now is per prior to the Chevron Doctrine being overturned, right. departmental agencies have broad deference in the rules that they mm -hmm. put out, okay? So nowhere in the HPA does it say, nowhere in the regs does it say that if a horse is turned down at the celebration on the first night, that that horse can't show back. The USDA arbitrarily did that. Yes. And the issue is our industry is like, well, if we just go along to get along, then they'll back off. And over the course of the years with the no show back rule, then they arbitrarily say, okay, we're going to give a second opinion. That started the year that honors showed. Right. Okay. And it, so that's when Aaron Reimer was a VMO and not in an administrative job. And he and Baker got into it at least three times. We recorded it. That's right. We were both, we were both there that year. So well, we just showed that video. Yeah. You should, you <laughs> that was, that was Reimer in there no, that, and him yeah, and Baker and, and all of them. And, and uh, Cesar and Sutherland. Right. So the, the issue is the ultimate power of enforcement lies with two entities. It, it relies with the federal government. It also relies with show management. Show right. management has the authority to say, yes. you know what, uh, Dr. Williams, I appreciate your opinion, but I disagree because my DQPs have cleared this horse. I'm going to allow this horse to show, but he's got to come back through inspection. And if we find something post show, then we'll deal with it. Then people need to know what their constitutional rights are and that you, you need to stop taking what the government says at face value. You're an American citizen, you're a taxpayer, and you have a right to enjoy your hobby and stop letting them steamroll. True. Well, we've been, we've been pushed and shoved. I think now, with what's going on, we finally file a, file a suit. We're going to be battling. All right, we're moving on. During the process of all this, we have faced all kinds of hurdles. One of them was the USDA using the thermography. Improperly. And we all know, look, now she's got on a coat jacket because it's cold. Yes. You're supposed to use the thermography in a controlled area something they never did, but they would use it to tell us something was wrong with our horse. Well, on that, if, you know, we, the industry bought the same thermo cameras that the government uses. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the instructions, it clearly says that the horse has to be acclimated to the ambient temperature of the environment because simply walking a horse across a pavement, across a gravel, driveway that exactly. it's going to draw heat up into the into the foot and in the thermography was supposed to originally be used as normal not normal and if it wasn't normal then that would cause for an additional inspection but we had vmos that didn't even have the camera on going i don't think i'd go through you know which vmo i'm talking about yeah, oh yeah and making kids cry so it's just another tactic that they use to terrorize people all right refused to allow people to video their inspections. Well, now we went through this when, when you was helping video, we had to put up with, like right there, you're in the door. <laughs> yeah, I, sh I shot that video. Yeah, you shot that video. <laughs> and moved, they would see where you are, then they'd move in front of you. And this is the way it went. They, they didn't want us to see what they were doing. They hid it from the public. They even went so far as to- Yeah, he was- they, 
in this video right here, he yeah. was actually saying, we need you to back out. And then he's videoing me backhanded like this. Yeah. So I had to actually get down between Lurch's legs here yeah. to get a shot of when they were pulling the hairs back. Well, those are some of the things we went through. But the whole time, everything we did, they would try to block us. So we went to Nashville and got a video log for Tennessee and caught them first time right out of the hoop. We, we caught what they were doing, videoed them with them using the thumb in the pocket and all this. We've shown that a million times. But what I really, and I enjoyed doing this, I really did. At the Ag Center, we was over there doing a show. The law had been passed, it was in place, and they taped off the whole Ag Center all the way around to where you could not get anywhere close to where they were actually inspecting the horse. People yes. had to walk There's all Dr. the way Baker around. Baker right there going, no, yeah. you can't video, you can't yeah. video. However, when I called the police on them, then it got a little different because once I called the police, they were instructed on what they could do, what they couldn't do, and right there's the police officer. He's telling them that they will either bring them horses up there where I am or I'm coming in there where they are. And when they said I couldn't do that, they were reminded that Bedford County and the city of Shelbyville owned the property where that ag center mm -hmm. was, not the USDA. Yes. So for the rest of the night, they had to bring them horses up there where I was videoing, mm -hmm. which served them right. I mean, they're the ones that did. They caused people walk all the way around the building. Well, with that law that you helped write and get passed, th that strengthened a right from the Fourth Amendment that owners already had. It was unconstitutional for the USDA to Walking say, because we wouldn't have been able to get, as you're seeing right now, now this is News Channel 5, but you can clearly see in this video that's showing right now, the shenanigans that were going on. And this is News Channel 5. They wouldn't even let News Channel 5, Dr. Baker right there, yeah. threw them out. I know. He made them the leave. Would not let them watch the videos or, or watch the inspections or video the inspections. Now, this, this is what makes me upset about the mainstream media. They could be doing this and explaining to people what we went through, mm -hmm. but they don't. Yes. They pick up the worst thing they can and they exploit it, talking about everything that we do, and the majority of it, it's a lie. They were there, they saw. If the, if the government and the VMOs were inspecting horses properly, why would they want to object? Damn video on them. Well, I, I can tell you why that is. And it starts off with Kevin Shea. Yeah. I mean, we, we have Freedom of Information Act records that show that any time that we send an email to the administrator, the deputy administrator, it might be two or three days before there was a response. But yet when people like Keith Dane and Wayne Purcelli and that radical animal rights on the right and the left were emailing Director Shea, they were getting responses within 24 hours, even sometimes same, you know, same afternoon. That's right. So what that tells me is agriculture has been completely overrun by the radical left. It's been completely overrun by the radical animal rights agenda. They're, they're messing with the food supply. And this is just a small snapshot of how bad it's actually gotten at USDA. It is. It's a small snapshot. It's like everybody runs them except who's supposed to run them. Correct. Well, yeah. my opinion is every year, every other year, they have someone that calls a disturbance in the USDA. Mm -hmm. If you look at all the ones that you we didn't show on that, they are not there, but now they got a new group of people that's calling a new disturbance. And we went through Johnson so, uh, yeah. and, and things he would do. We went through other people out there like Sutherland and what but, he would do in yeah, Baker. Right. And now we got McHenry and and Amy Adams. Adams. We've got them all, each one of them. McHenry is the one that snatched the reins out of a lady's hand and then threw them back at her. That's yeah. assault. Why was the, I mean, I'm sorry, but why was, okay, number one, when you're dealing with the USDA, local police don't have that jurisdiction. You've got to call a sheriff's deputy. Yep. You gotta call a sheriff's deputy. Why did nobody step up and call the sheriff's department because Candy Green got assaulted by a federal employee. I know. 
an assault doesn't have to, I mean, you could do that and that's assault, but yeah. I could also say, get it, get this under control. Yeah. It's, it's assault is defined by is any action or spoken or physical that would cause a person to be in harm or distress. Yes. Well, funny you should say that because they sent an email two hours before the show started explaining all the different changes in the inspection area that they that. were made, being made that would be considered assault. Verbal, even ponytail, stuff like this. In other words, if you walked up there and, and did this and asked them a question, yeah, they, they could they charge could, you with assault, assault that's right. but they can do that and nothing's done about it. But yet, I mean, I, I wonder if we got the video on it, but, but, but Kerry McHenry can grab reins out of someone's hand and throw it up at someone's chest, and that's okay. Oh, and yeah. that's okay. Yep. I mean... But it, she, that's not the only one. She, she did one about the uh, a guy about 18 inches, telling him 18 inches, 18 inches. All of this, and, and a horse is going to move around. You 18 inches away, Right there's the candy is. Yeah. yeah. Watch what she does. So, so the horse moves his head over, and I guess he smacks Dr. McHenry in the face with a bit shank. Now, Candy's doing exactly. She put her head under the yeah. horse. Now watch, here it comes. Candy's explaining. She's got her hand up that this is aggressive behavior. And she's standing there holding the horse's foot like, and the horse is going, what's going on, folks? Well, I mean, there ain't nothing wrong with a horse. You can tell no, that. No, nothing wrong with this horse. But it, but it's. She See, right tries, here it is. There yeah, it is. She tries to. She tries her best to cause a conflict. That's what she well, said. Well, the thing is, the whole time she's holding that, she got that horse's leg up. That horse yeah. is standing on three legs. That's a 1,200 pound animal that's yeah. standing there on three legs right there. And you gonna tell me that well, you? Don't, you can see by Dr. McHenry's body language that she is aggressive. She is condescending to a taxpayer. I mean, this is a taxpayer. This, I mean, when you work for the federal government, you're supposed to have conduct that is beyond reproach because you are a representative of the full weight, might, and power and glory of the United States government. You know and the, that is unacceptable. The main word you said there? What? Suppose. Well, I mean. Because <laughs> they don't pay attention. They want rules that they want to enforce, but they want to take a rule and twist it. They want to turn it. It's just like the HPA. If they, when, when the, they called Homeland Security and the FBI on me one year, they said that I was threatening them at the celebration. And when it was the meeting, I was told, well, what they want you to do is, is back off the way that you're describing what they're doing. And I, I told them, get over it. Yeah, I told them, get over it. Hey, I told them exactly, this is exactly what I told them. I said, well, you can tell Gibson that when they start inspecting horses properly, then I'll calm it down. But until then, I'm, <coughs> I'm speeding it up. And I did because they weren't. They got a video on their website explaining how they inspect a horse. But when you lead a horse up to them, that's that is not, not what they, what they do. do. No, you, you I mean, they don't. At Woodbury, I watched Amy Adams take her thumb and do like this. Right. And You're pinch, not the up only skin, one that saw it. pinch up skin, cause the horse to bleed, and then turn the horse down. And I'm going, that is, that is a violation of the law. That is intentionally inflicting pain on an animal, and that is against the law in Tennessee. She should have been arrested for it. Well, she should, but we, we do not follow the laws the way we should and we allow them to do what they want to but I'm, I'm a firm believer when they come in and start creating violations that they are in effect fixing a horse show because this is competition this is a show mm -hmm. you're at, you're wanting your horse to be the best and when they start turning down horses like they did one on Jerry yeah. for having a field scar below his knee then we're getting completely out of hand. We're not even close to the HPA. So that's why I'm suggesting everybody. There's well, okay. They call that horse out. That is not a violation of no. anything. That's not an open lesion. That's not an open wound. There's no edema. There's no blood. There's no nothing. But they turned a the horse down. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, Amy Adams turned a horse down for a, for a girth rub underneath. I, I mean, that's not in the HPA. And and we as an industry need to stop. The government says, well, we're going to do this. Our attitude needs to be, prove it. 
They, prove it. They, they can't prove it. And they, that, that's, that's why, the point. That is why when they did away with these administrative judges, it puts a whole new light on how they have to prosecute us. Now they really do honestly have to show some evidence. Well, they can't just say, hey, because I said so. They have to show evidence, and they can't do it. Right here. That is not an HPA violation. No, Why was that horse that turned is one. That is one of the 29 horses that they did biopsies on. They did 29 horses, did biopsies on them. 58 negative biopsies came back. Because they didn't have a scar. They didn't have no scar. I mean, and the scar rule really is a misnomer. It just it needs to be called the inflammation rule. It needs because, to be called something besides what they're calling. Yeah, well, well I mean, there's there, there's no way, okay, most gated horse shows, what it's saddlebreds, walking horses, whatever, you're in the arena for no more than 30 minutes if it's a big class. Yeah. There's no way that you can pass inspection pre-show, three classes before you show, and mysteriously a scar comes up on a horse's foot. Oh, I, I can tell you one better than that. We got... A gentleman that he, he's no longer with us, but he was a legend. He served four years suspension on a horse that never missed a single show. That's right. Never missed a show, but that man right there, Billy Gray, served four years suspension on a scar rule on a horse that never, that never missed showing and retired a multi-time world grand champion, yep. multi-time champion, but still that did not stop this gentleman right here from serving four years for something that they wanted to call a scar. Well, with the Chevron deference being overturned, if I were currently serving a suspension, I would be talking to my attorneys to find out, is there a way that this can be reversed because or overturned. Between the, the Supreme Court saying that you can't rely specifically on administrative law judges to prosecute for these crimes, you actually have to go to federal court, and then the Chevron deference being overturned, this is a very big thing because the evidence that the USDA gathers in the inspection area, you, is you, flawed. You, you might get reasonable suspicion, the first standard, to establish some probable cause, but you're not going to get to clear and convincing, and you're absolutely not going to get to be on a shadow of a doubt because you're dealing with an animal that has a mind of its own. That's right, plus the fact that we, they've never, even though they were told by a court of law, due process, they've never granted it. And, and they have to do that. I mean, you well, know, in, in, my, in my perfect world, you know, pre-show, the horse shows no matter what, and if there's a question, the horse comes back through inspection when the horse is done showing, and if there's That's an it. issue, if there's an issue, then the penalty is harder because you did in fact show a non-compliant horse. Yes. But to turn these horses down flat out the gate, you're denying people their due process and you're devaluing their property. Right. So as an industry, we, if the government says we have an idea, we just need to go, no, you're not just gonna spring this on us. We're gonna change it. 